That was a good, good lead-in song there. We'll work till Jesus comes. I like that. Um, so I'm going to be talking to you about embody tonight. And so that is one of our quarterly themes that we've been working on this year, um, posted up around. And so we've been working our way towards embody. Embody we'll be working on during the fall. And we're going to talk a little bit about that here in, in a second. But I want to tell you a little bit of the history behind these themes and, and what our goal, what the shepherd's goal was this year with those. And so we started back in uh, the winter quarter with servant spirit. And so why do we start with servant spirit? Well, you know, for us to work till Jesus comes, for us to do what we need to be doing to follow God's uh, will and his word, uh, we need to have a serving spirit. We need to be somebody that, that will serve the Lord, that will work to... Uh, and so if you don't have that servant spirit, that desire, um, it's hard to get stuff done, right? If you have two people that have the desire and the rest of the people don't, you'll get two people's worth of work done, right? So the more of us that have that servant spirit the better it is. So that was a good lead-in as we started the year. And then we talked about enrich during the spring quarter. And, um, you know, how, how do we enrich our lives as Christians? And why do we do that? Why would we enrich our lives? Um, well, we do that partly because we're commanded to. Fellowship is, is, we're commanded to fellowship. And if you think about when you're fellowshipping with fellow Christians, um, not only the good feeling that you get, but the discussion, the chance to, you know, if you have visitors, if you ever inv invited a visitor to a potluck uh, or something like that, that's a powerful thing. So we worked on enriching the membership and things that we do uh, for that. And then during the summer months, kind of where we're at right now, uh, we're working on empowerment. Uh, some of the classes that are going on right now is, is uh, people being empowered how to teach others the gospel. You know, uh, a couple of years ago we had a, a survey and we'd ask people you know, to dream and think about things that they would like to see. You'd be real surprised how many people said, we want to learn how to do that, you know, not just just teach them Bible. Well, no, they, they want the method, the, how, to, how to do that. And so that's part of the goal of this quarter was to empower people to teach others. And there's a lot of ways to do that, right? It doesn't have to be sit down with me and have a Bible study, okay? That's probably not my favorite method, okay? Uh, my, my favorite method is getting to know the people and building a relationship and, and doing that if there's time, right? So... That brings us to embody, and we're, that's what we're going to talk about tonight, the, uh, the outreach part of it. So, embody. So defined, it's to cause to become a body or part of a body or give a body to. But that's kind of, you know, what do I do with that? You know, what, what does that mean? Um, but if I said to become part of the church part of the body of the church, then it starts making sense, right? Then it starts making sense. Um, we're told to teach others to become part of the church. And so that makes some sense. So that's the, the big picture idea of embody is to grow the church. Uh, and who's the church? The church is us. We are the church. Um, we are God's family. We are God's family. So I love, there's so many good parallels with, you know, different things in, in our spiritual life and in our life here on earth that helps me, my poor little mind, think, you know, gives me a, a parallel thought to go along with. And so our, our Christian family, our, our godly family, parallels in a lot of ways our earthly family, if you think about it, right? We have a father, we have children, we're born into that family. We, there's growth over the time, both physical and uh, maturity. There's training and instruction. Okay, does this, is this starting to sound like stuff that goes on within the church? I think so. Uh, 
Obedience of children, okay, doing what, you know, the parents tell them, the father tells them. Uh, uh, there's choices, you know. You remember the teenage years, your teenage years or your teenager's teenage years? There's choices, right? Uh, and you have to make those. And you have the cho choice to be a part of the family, to serve within the family. You have the choice to, uh, you know, be at an active part of that family uh, and I'd have to say when I was a, uh, a teenager I was kind of on that line right I, uh, that was a do-over I would like but yeah you have a choice and relationships within the family you know uh, parent children 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 uh, those kind of things so it draws a great parallel I think to the church family and and what's expected of us as a church family. Uh, and so as we think about growing God's family, uh, bringing others to Christ, uh, how can we reach others? How do we reach others for Christ? You know, there's a lot of different ways. Different people have different ways. Um, you know, you can invite them to church service, right? Um, some, some people that's easy for, some people that's not, but that's a good thing. But that's something you could do. You could invite them to church service to be with your family, to be with your family. Uh, part of the power of that is, yeah, they may hear a great lesson from Tim or one of our other ministers or from some Wednesday night teacher guy, but um, they're going to get to meet all the family or some of the family. And, you know, depending on that person, they, that may be what they're looking for is good spiritual friends um, that they can share their life with, share their problems with, and it can grow from there. So, yeah, friendships and acquaintances. Those may be some of the ones that you're inviting to services. Maybe somebody that work at school, that kind of thing. Uh, but those are places that you can, you can find to grow the family. Um, special focus areas you know remember the gospel meeting times and the uh, events and campaigns and the bus ministries and all those uh, those worked uh, depending on what's going on in the world some of them are more effective than others at different times but those ha ha had their place and may still have their place in some areas um, serving you, you know just serving in different areas i think about new heights i think about our clothing room I think about our food pantry, and I can't tell you how many people are served through those three ministries, but a lot of people are served. And it may be, and you know, I don't want to limit it, but it may be that that person just gets food for a long time, and that's the only place it goes. But it may also be, you know, they they talk with the the people that are volunteering with that, and maybe they're given some information or. Somebody tells them they'll pray for them. So by serving, what are you telling people? You're immediately telling them that you care about them. Hopefully, hopefully they see that, but, you know, that's how I take it. When people do things for me, and especially if it's kind of out of the out of their way, they must care about me because they took their time to do that. Okay? By our example, you know, that, could, that flows out into all these different areas. By our example... Letting our light shine, uh, Matthew 5, 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. How do we do that? How do we, how do we let our light shine? How do we be that example? Okay? How do we do that so that we can bring others to the body, that embody idea? Um, obviously, to be an example, to let our light shine or to be salty, we have to be around people, right? You have to, um, some way or other, you have to communicate with people. It may be through a media out, but for the most part, 
it's being around people. Uh, <coughs> where are we around people? Where, where does that happen? Well, we're around some people right now, but those that we're wanting to bring to Christ, where are we around people? You know, church service, yes, but that's not really, unless it's a visitor or something, that's not the outreach part. Work, school, okay, uh, our neighbors, out shopping. Uh, you know, some people are really good at, they may go, be going through a checkout line and all of a sudden they're talking to somebody about <coughs> being willing to pray for them. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, those things. But also, something I want to talk to you about, and we're going to spend a little bit of time on, is common interest and activities. Okay? How many have a hobby? Man, I know more of you have a hobby than that. A lot of, a lot of us have hobbies, don't we? Some of us have too many hobbies and don't know what we want to do. Some of us serve, our hobbies have service involved with them, right? Um, it's a way for us to serve, but what else? It's just something we enjoy doing. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about these common interests or activities and how those can be used to reach others, to bring others to the body. Okay. Um, first of all, usually if, if it's an interest or a hobby, an activity, most times you've got some talent in that area, right? Most most things I like to do, I have talent, and if I don't have talent, I don't do them too long because I'm not good at them. Um, you know, some things we do till it feels right, but um, but a lot of times the things we're interested in, that's where our passion is, and and our talents go along with that. Um, so that's immediately this common interest that you're involved with. You're committed to it because you enjoy it. It's you feel like you're good at it, right? So that, that's a good start. Um, and many times it's a way that we relax. It may involve work. You know, some of the things I enjoy do, I sweat a lot doing it, right? But I enjoy it, um, and I'm willing to do that. But it's relaxing It's because it's something I desire to do, okay? Um, but it's also a way of serving others while doing something that we do enjoy. Uh, it is a way to serve others and using our talents. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, bear with me just a second. Some of you have heard my example, but I like to use this because it's what I'm passionate about, right? It's something I like. But I think it's a good example of a common interest uh, that, that I use uh, as an outreach. Okay, So most of you that know me at all know I've been involved with Boy Scouts and now Trail Life for 37 years or so, for a long, long time. Okay, so why did I do that? Okay, first of all, I love it. I love the outdoors. I love doing that. If you'd asked me when I was 18 if I was going to love to teach and work with young boys pretty much my whole life, I would have laughed at you and said, no way. But uh, I can remember my father-in-law, Jim Lee, and Jeans Wooten, uh, I guess they saw that in me or they were willing to take a risk on me. And so they said, hey, why don't you come help us teach this fifth grade boys class? okay, well, I knew I would, you know, as a Christian, I knew I needed to do that kind of stuff, right? But I was 20 years old, and, uh, but I did it. And within six months, I'm going, where are they at? They're gone, <laughs> and they left me with it, okay? Man, they went out in faith, but I've been teaching that fifth grade boys class since I was 20, so, and I'm 60 right now, so a long, long time. I don't. You, I wouldn't do that if I didn't have a passion, right? I wouldn't do that if. And if you've ever worked with fifth, sixth grade boys, you know you, you better have a passion for it, right? Uh, so, through that led into working with boys, and then thinking, how do I get my outdoor fix that I need, and make it a worthy cause? And so, Charles Emerson and I decided, well, let's start a Boy Scout troop, I and mean, we. We both had that idea separately, and it came together uh, at one time, so we did. And so I've done that for a long, long time with a lot of other good men 
uh, working right alongside me doing that. Um, and so, you know, the thrust of that is outdoors. The thrust of that is learning skills and different things. But guess what else goes with it? Times on campouts when you have church services out in a way. Um, had a lot of fathers, boys, things that they might never come if I said, hey, you want to come to church with me? They might never darken the door, but you want to go camping with me? And uh, backpacking, and we just happen to have a church service while we're out there. Yeah, and I do admit some of my church lessons out there have been focused towards those guys. Um, so <clears throat> I say that to say that you can take whatever your interest is and use it to the glory of God. And what better way to multitask than doing some of that? And there's, you know, I could go on, there's a big long list of things that, that there are from homeschool to, to uh, you know, quilting to, uh, in fact, I had some ladies come up to me and they're wanting to start, and I want to announce it later tonight, but uh, they're wanting to start a Heritage Girls, which is parallel to Trail Life, which are both similar to Boy and, Boy and Girl Scout, but using them as a ministry or as a, an outreach tool. Um, and so they're wanting to start one here. And so where we've been very successful at training young boys to be Christian men and even converting quite a few people. I've converted more people through Boy Scouting than anything else I've done. Uh, now we're looking at a, a girls group that will do the same thing. And this is ladies with common interest, right? Getting together to do this. But part of why they're doing that <clears throat> is they see the need uh, for young girls to learn to be Christian women. And it's a way to do that. Okay? We have other programs that go on. You know, we have a great youth group here, and that's great. Um, youth, you know, I've been helped with youth group for a long time. It's great. But this is an added to those type of activities, okay? So common interest um, activities, using those as an outreach. So Philippians 2.4, each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also the interest of others, okay? I think that kind of fits with what we're talking about um, is, uh, you know, you if you're doing something with somebody that enjoys the same thing, you immediately have a connection, right? You immediately have a connection. Um, I wrote down in my notes, potlucks, why do we, why are those so popular and have been for all these years? Because you got, you got something to talk about, right? Oh, how's that food, you know? It's an immediate thing to talk about. And so, you know, these common interests have that too. It's less intimidating because you do have things to talk about and they're things that both of you like. Um, think about the parable of the sower. Uh, you know, why did Jesus use that parable? He was talking to farmers. He was talking to people that planted seed. Um, and so if he used that parable to people that never darkened a garden or a, a farm or whatever, it wouldn't have near the impact with it. So it, it was a common interest for them. Oh, yeah, I'm interested in, I know what it's like to plant seed and have some of it fall on the hard path and not grow at all or just barely grow. And those rocks in my field, man, those are bad. So you got these immediate things, but then you immediately, it's like, yeah, well, it's just like the word, you know, and some people are receptive to it, and some not at all, and some get excited, and then they fall away, and some just can't get enough of it, and they grow so good. Um, so that that's part of that common interest, you know, type thing, because Jesus immediately had their attention when he's talking farming, right? Talking planning. So... What about the apostles, you know, fishermen? Um, they had time to, to talk, didn't they, in doing some of that? Um, you know, Jesus fished some. 
Uh, so there's some common interests there as well. Um, The job interests that are out there, um, you know, at our job places, um, usually we're working someplace that we've got an interest or a talent at. And so use that as a way to connect with people. You know, you're talking to your coworkers all the time or your school mates or whatever. Um, use that as a springboard uh, to talk to people. Um, but those, both school and, and work, to me, are a little more difficult than the hobbies and the extracurricular things because it's more of a necessity type thing. Um, and so not really a choice. So maybe it's harder to connect in those areas. But if somebody actively chooses to be involved in something uh, where there's common interests, I know Janet does Daughters of the American of the revolution, okay, D-A-R. And uh, those ladies are passionate about that. They are passionate about that. And, you know, Janet said she gets in there and immediately they said, would you say the prayers for the ladies group? Would you, you know, would you do that? And we'll give you the prayer. She says, I don't need the prayer. <laughs> I can, I got the prayer handled, you know. But, but immediately she's letting her light shine. And, you know, I could point to so many other different areas that that people are, are doing great things uh, because of their common interest. Matthew 4, 19, come follow me, Jesus said, and I'll make you fishers of men. Fishers of men. Um, going out there and, and looking for people. So imitating Jesus in all we do, how important is, how important is that? How important is his example to you? How important is are the things that he says? Um, his servant spirit, the way that Jesus loved others in all that he did. Um, you know, one one of the things that I challenge myself, but don't always do as good as I'd like to, is to always lead with love lead with love uh, even if you know some of the the people that work for me every once in a while I have to reprimand them right um, and sometimes it, I get a little upset because they're not just not doing their job um, and if I go to them in that state of mind not so good right not so good but if I go to them because I love their soul I go to them because I desire for them to do better. Uh, it's a whole different outlook, right? It's a whole different outlook if I... And that's what Jesus did. That's what Jesus did was to uh, love people. He loved people first. And so that's a good goal. Imitating Jesus in his humility, being humble, um, you know, I think about what gets in the way. Uh, there's one song, I don't know why so many things seem to get in the way. Me, basically, of me and doing what I should be doing. Uh, I remember one church camp I was at and we sang that. And I, prior to that week, I'd been struggling. I sang that and I, said, I thought, all right, why are you letting so many things get in the way of what you do and the things that usually get in our way to serve are what the things that get in our way don't matter that much they don't matter that much in fact some of the things we think matter so much two months later you go back and you look at them and you go why did that bother me why did that limit my service why did you know Go on and on, but yeah. So selfishness, that humbleness, that's uh, that's desirable. You know, anytime you start thinking, okay, how, how am I going to feel about that? How's that going to affect me? Those kind of thoughts just draw you right into me, me, me. Okay. 
We already talked about love and compassion, or love, but compassion for others, caring about how they feel, caring about how they feel. Um, so in Jesus' example, think about how he taught. Um, think about what he enjoyed. Have you ever thought about Jesus just as a person? Not as God's son, but just as a human. He came to earth, made himself a human, right? Experienced the same temptations. Uh, he handled them better, right? But, uh, but ex experienced happiness, sadness, all those things. But uh, have you thought about what Jesus enjoyed? Do you think he enjoyed teaching? I'm thinking he did. I think Jesus enjoyed that. Uh, I think he enjoyed fishing. Okay, he could he could bring in a bunch of fish. <laughs> right. um, I think he enjoyed being around others, spending time with others. You know, the the scriptures are packed with you know Jesus being around others and talking to them. But what else do we know about Jesus? We know every once in a while he wants to be alone. You, us introverts can relate to that, right? Um, Coming up and doing this, it's out of my comfort zone. I've gotten better at it over the years, but it's out of my comfort zone, right? But if you ask me to climb a mountain with you, that's my comfort zone. Uh, but there are times, even if I'm doing something I really enjoy, I need to be alone for a while. And, I, and Jesus, I think, was the same way. And so, you know, as, as we think about embody this next quarter uh, and using that as a time to take these tools that hopefully we have or we're learning uh, to teach others to spend time with others uh, in common interest areas uh, whatever that looks like that we use those opportunities to let our light shine that we use those opportunity uh, to be salty, to give some flavor, some good Christian flavor to the situation, okay, to the people that were around. Um, you know, this just popped in my head, but I think it, it fits here. Um, can you make a mistake and, and actually, let's say you get angry at somebody and maybe you let your temper get a little bit high. Can you turn that into a good thing for Jesus? see some heads going yeah yeah you can but what do you have to do it's back to that humble thing huh you circle back around you say you know what I got to thinking about it or uh, whatever and I sh I didn't treat you right I got angry when I shouldn't have got angry I uh, I said some things I didn't mean and I'm sorry hope you forgive me for that and I'm gonna pray about that uh, so yeah, you can take that bad, you know, not so good thing you did and you can turn that around for God. Uh, so some important things. So I may wrap up just a little bit early here, but I want you to think about the things that you do um, in your life. You know, uh, all of us have some other interests. I'm going to pick on my father-in-law because he can take it, right? But... Uh, at his house, if you know Jim, you know he loves bees, okay? And loves a lot of other stuff, loves fishing. But he's got people, you know, he lives out in the country away from a lot of other people. He's got people coming over his house that he's made relationships with that, and will sit for hours talking to him, to him about bees or about fishing or about this or about that. And guess what he gets into the conversation? Christ. He gets Christ into that situation. But he lives out in the country. What's his common interest, you know? Well, his passion for what he does. And so he's using that. And all of us have stories like that or things like that that we could be doing uh, to reach people for Jesus. We just have to be purposeful about it. We just have to think about, you know, okay, I'm going to do this. How can I use this? to glorify God? How can I use this to bring other people to Christ? So think about that in your own life. Um, 
and uh, challenge yourself and uh, pray about it. And let's, let's say a prayer and we'll, we'll end. Bow with me. God and Father, we thank you for this family that we're a part of here in Broken Arrow. We thank you for the church family around the world. Father, we thank you for the strength that we can draw from this family. We thank you for the, the comfort that we get from this family, um, not only in fun times and joyful times, but also in difficult times, Father. This family is very important to us. Father, um, help us to uh, think so much about this family and be so excited about this family that we want others to share in this family, this church family uh, uh, that you have set up. Use us, Father, in things that we do to take our passions and apply those towards teaching others of you. Help us, Father, in everything that we do, that, that we focus on you, that we focus on our home in heaven. Let others see the light, your light, your son's light in our life. Let others feel and taste that saltiness that, that we can provide that shows our passion for this family, for this body, for your word. Father, we pray that you give, give each one of us a servant spirit, the desire to serve in, in whatever way that we can. And we know, Father, that you created all of us with different talents, different abilities, different interests, different passions. Um, and that's a good thing, Father, because those in the world uh, are not all the same either. And so... Uh, our collective interest and collective passions, Father, help us to go out and um, touch the world. Help us to go out into this neighborhood and let others see us. We've got many things, Father, that we are serving within the neighborhood. That's great. Let us go out into our jobs and the schools and, and um, our hobbies again, Father, and, and use those to your glory. Thank you so much for your son, Father, that's, that's made this uh, all possible, made the hope of heaven possible for us, Father. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.